Over the course of the past three years or so, there has been a massive botnet attack that has impacted various different devices from security cameras to routers and firewalls and to NAS devices. And certain Synology devices are believed to have been impacted. Now the actual botnet attack, the way that it works, we will go over. But what I wanna say right off the bat is that if you have never exposed your NAS to the external internet and you haven't actually installed any unofficial packages, you really don't have that much to worry about. But it is important to understand how this stuff works because if you understand how it works, you can understand how to protect yourself because it unfortunately doesn't mean that since your NAS wasn't impacted, a security camera that you have outside wasn't impacted. So we're gonna go over all of this and learn how you can kind of protect yourself from this now and in the future. Now. I kind of have a unique perspective on this because I did something that was not particularly smart. I created a video a few months ago that highlighted that I exposed a Synology NAS to the external internet. And when I did that, I said that I did it to try and find out exactly where the attacks came from, where the actual unauthorized login attacks came from. And what I didn't tell you is that I did leave the actual admin account activated and I set it to a very basic password. And I did that because I wanted to try and get the NAS to have some sort of a ransomware attack on it. And what I did is I basically set up the NAS with various different levels of protection. So various shared folders, and some shared folders had snapshots enabled, and other shared folders didn't. Some had immutable snapshots, others didn't. I set up a backup task, I set up an encrypted backup task. And the point was that I wanted to see if it actually was compromised, what would happen and how we could recover from it. And I wanted to show you all of that. What I didn't really take into consideration was stuff like this. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because there were actual logins on it. So meaning the admin account was logged into. Now the good news is that I had done all of this on a totally separate network. So I purchased a separate ISP, I used a separate router, I set up a separate NAS device, I even did it in virtual DSM. I just tried to put as many protections as I could. But when I saw this, it made me look at myself and say, was this device actually compromised in this? And I don't believe it was, but let's go over everything so that you could see kind of how all this works. All right, so on this test network, this is basically the layout. This is a sneak peek of next week or the week after's video. But basically in this isolated test network, I have a separate broadband modem that feeds into a Synology router, and I have the device I'm on right now, that's the PC, and this is the DS923+, Plus that I expose to the external internet, but it's really virtual DSM instance, so as you can see, the default admin account is enabled. Um, so inside of the actual log center, you can see that there were login attempts, and there were more login attempts, but I cleared the logs at some point, I don't really remember why. So when I saw these, I took a step back and I said, well, the actual NAS wasn't compromised with ransomware, that I know. And I'm able to validate that by actually going into FileStation and checking to make sure that none of these documents are encrypted and none of them are. I just basically created a bunch of fake data here. None of them are. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't compromised some other way. So in order to highlight that, we're quickly gonna actually look at this cybersecurity advisory. And what I did is I went through and I highlighted what I thought would be important to you. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that this impacted routers, firewalls, NAS devices, and Internet of Things devices. Internet of Things devices is so broad. It could be security cameras, it could be thermostats, it could be smart plugs. There's so many different things that it could be, but it's important to understand exactly what was actually impacted. In red here, this is what the actual attackers did with these devices. So they set up a botnet, which basically means that there are various devices out there that were all impacted, and they used those devices together to do certain things like DDoS attacks. But that's just one example. They probably were used for various things. This is very important because it's not only devices that were end of life, it's actually devices that are currently supported as well. So if you're on the latest version of whatever operating system, you know, the device is actually on, that doesn't mean that it wasn't impacted. So this is actually how it worked. So there were a network of devices and those were the actual bots. And what they would do is they would have some sort of malware installed on them 
and then they would conduct attacks, DDoS attacks and potentially more. Now this is kind of the node count that exists out there. So as you can see, the United States is the absolute biggest in terms of all of these, but various devices all over the world. And now what we're gonna get into is actually how you can possibly find out if you were impacted, but more than likely you won't. So all of the attacks occurred on the domain w8510.com. The problem is that as you can see, the last seen date for all of these was you know, early September. So unless you had a way that you were tracking your actual DNS requests and you're able to go through and search that, you're not gonna find it. So what I did to try and see if this was still occurring is I set up Pi Hole in this virtual DSM instance. And then I just basically assigned it to be my DNS server. And then I went through and I searched for that domain. I didn't find anything. But unfortunately, like I said, that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't actually impacted because these were all last seen a few weeks ago. I implemented this today. So unfortunately, I'm not absolutely positive if this device was or was not impacted. And after this, I'm not, going to keep it online probably at this point. Time to actually take that off. So these are the recommended mitigations. And I'll, we'll quickly look at the actual Synology NAS in a second so that you could see exactly what you could potentially do. But these are very generic recommendations that you can take. So disable unused services and ports, implement network segmentation. We're gonna come back to that one because that's a big one. Monitor your network, apply patches and updates, always update to the latest, which is interesting because the latest at this point is DSM 7.2.2, which there was a lot of controversy over, but there were a lot of security fixes in that. So now you're kind of looking at this and you're saying, well, do I need to install DSM 7.2.2 or do I not? Unfortunately, we don't have that information right now. Hopefully we will in the future. Replace default passwords with strong passwords. That's an obvious one. Plan for device reboots. This is an interesting one. Rebooting a device terminates all running processes, which may remove specific types of malware, such as fileless malware that runs in the host's memory. So a reboot will automatically stop that process. It doesn't mean the process won't start back up after the reboot, but it does mean that if it's running right now, it will kill that process. And then the last one is replace end of life equipment. Now the big one here is gonna be implement network segmentation. So I've gone over this in videos in the past, but you always want to try and segment your network. And a very basic example is a guest network, an IoT network, and a primary LAN. And your primary LAN would have all your trusted devices, your phones, your computers, basically anything that you trust. The IoT network would be for everything else, potentially security cameras, thermostats, and various other things. And then your guest network would be for your guests. Unfortunately, implementing a segmented network wouldn't actually protect you from this because if the actual impacted device had the malware installed and it could have been installed various ways, even potentially coming with the malware installed, it wouldn't actually stop it from accessing the actual internet. And that is how these botnet attacks work. They connect to the internet and then they do what they have to do. So that wouldn't have stopped it. But what network segmentation allows you to do is it allows you to separate all of your more untrusted devices. So an example would be security cameras. Security cameras are very, very rarely patched after you get them. So what you do is you buy the device, you put it up somewhere so that you can access it, you view it, over the course of years, but you never actually go in to patch it. And most of the times those devices aren't actually patched automatically. So in situations like that, what network segmentation allows you to do is block access to the internet. So to give you an example, I have a security camera VLAN at my house where all of my cameras are under and access is blocked at the internet level. So they're not allowed to actually access the internet. They're also not allowed to access any other VLANs. But then what I do is I set my other devices, my trusted devices, to be able to access that VLAN. And then I could see the cameras, I can interact with them, I could do what I have to do, but the cameras can't access the internet and they can't access anything else. So from that angle, I'm not worried because I know that those devices at least can access it. For other devices like thermostats and, and smart plugs and stuff like that, I don't think you can really protect yourself from that specific type of attack if you didn't go in and actually install anything maliciously and the device itself came actually impacted. Now, I don't have any reason to believe that they were, I'm just using that as an example. Now to try to highlight to you what actually was impacted, 
This is a, um, I'll leave a link to this in the description. I, I downloaded it so that I could highlight some of the important things here. But these are some of the devices that were actually impacted. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of, you know, common names here that you've probably seen in the past. And what that means is that in one way or another, these vendors have devices that were potentially impacted. This right here is a big one. Um, what you have to do, though, is you have to go through and see what vendor it is and see what was impacted. This is an older version. So you most likely, if you're running any Ubiquiti gear, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But the point is that at some point, these could have been impacted. And that's why staying up to date is so important for this stuff. What you're not going to find on here is Synology. So that's where you start to question was it actually impacted or was it not? I don't think we have that information right now. The belief is that it was impacted. But in terms of this actual device here, you'll see QNAP, you'll see you know Buffalo, you'll see a few other NAS vendors, but you're not gonna see Synology. So does that mean that they were impacted? No. Does that mean that they weren't impacted? No, I don't think we know. But what you can do to protect yourself is two things. One, never expose the NAS to the external internet. That's obvious. But the first thing that I looked at is I went through and I checked to see if those unauthorized login attempts had actually attempted to set up a router. So in the, the router configuration here, there's something called UPnP and UPnP should always be turned off. But UPnP will port forward on your behalf. So my train of thought was the device was impacted. Did they go in and try and actually port forward port 22 because they had admin credentials. Did they try and port forward port 22 so they could access the shell externally, install whatever and manage it remotely? And they didn't. Now, the one thing I'll say is that that doesn't mean they didn't try because the actual UPnP, I had that disabled. I, I didn't want this to impact any other devices other than this virtual DSM instance. So I went in early and made sure that I actually disabled that. But what you wanna do for UPnP is make sure that there's nothing in this list. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna log into your router and every router is different. This is a Synology router, but what you're gonna do is log into that and then you have to find the actual UPnP setting. So in Synology routers, it's edit and then advance on the actual local network and you'll see UPnP here. You wanna make sure this is disabled. You should never have devices being able to port forward on their behalf. If something's being port forwarded, you should know about it. I've said this before, many people have said this, but the problem is it's something to kind of dismiss because you don't think it's super important and it is convenient, but don't, don't keep it enabled because in this example, they could have potentially did a lot of things if they were able to actually you know, port forward on behalf of the router. So make sure that UPnP is disabled. And then other than that, make sure the NAS isn't actually exposed to the internet and you can feel somewhat protected. Now again, for your other devices, they could have been impacted. I have no idea. And I think we won't know for a while exactly what was and wasn't impacted and specific devices and models, et cetera. But what we do know is there were over 100,000 devices. I think it was over 200,000 devices that were actually impacted. So. That's a lot, that's a very wide range. So do what you can to protect yourself. But again, if you've never exposed your NAS to the internet and you've also never installed any unofficial packages, you really don't have much to worry about. But in the future, don't expose the NAS to the internet. And quite honestly, you really should stick to official Synology packages because if it makes it into the package center, you're at least protected from the sense that Synology went in and actually approved that package for their package center. And that gives you some comfort. But in the world we live in with self-hosted applications and everything, unfortunately, you don't really know the extent of what is and isn't trusted, but you just have to try to use caution and understand you're probably not ever gonna know 100%, but it is something that you could be aware of. So I hope this video helped kind of explain a little bit of it. There's a lot to it. I'm not a cybersecurity expert, so I can't really dive into it. But those other videos will be out there on other cybersecurity focused channels, so you might wanna check those out. But other than that, if there's any update, I'll leave the update in the comments as well as the link that you can go through and kind of find this for yourself as well. So if you made it this far, I hope this video helped you out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.